I think, what if cultural Marxists were, were to make a movie? I'm like, oh, yeah, that's everything you've seen in the past 50 years. Oh. Oh, that's what it looks like. Yeah, 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 like literally everything you've seen, everything you thought you'd enjoy. Once you take that red pill and you go back and watch these movies, you're like, oh, this isn't what I thought it was, is it? This is just more, just more propaganda from this usual suspects in Hollywood. Um, so my predictions for this Rings of Power, Lord of the Ring um, film is uh, Amazon streaming thing. It's going to be the biggest Hollywood loss in in history. By that I mean they put a lot of money into it. And they're not going to get that money back. So it's going to be a, a, something just amazing. Record setting. I predict it will be record setting. But that Amazon streaming service, you got to subscribe to it. So that means they're expecting people to subscribe for the point of watching, being able to watch Rings of Power. <laughs> Are people going to subscribe to watch Rings of Power? Call me crazy, I predict. No, they're not going to pay whatever the monthly fee is to watch Rings of Power. <laughs> because it looks absolutely insane. Keep in mind all their this uh, cultural Bolshevik terminology they use from the you know critical theory type of schools the, you know these these Marxist uh, diversity and inclusion that just means European erasure it's it's evil from cultural Marxists in fact you you keep a lot of these kind of template uh, responses um, available when they when they push this this kind of cultural Marxism propaganda it's like oh yeah this is just Bolshevik propaganda from from the worst people on earth. Loudly cheer Weinstein in Hollywood, or, or or Woody Allen, or who's the guy who flew had to fly to France to avoid charges. Um, so this is going to be huge, just a huge, huge bomb. But the money doesn't matter to them. This is the philosophy of globalism. It's like a religion. They treat people as fungible pawns whose only purpose is to carry out this globalist new world order. It's the eternal struggle between these international globalists and the tribal nationalists. What her opening line is, we're not like token uh, diversity purse puppy hires. She's literally a diversity. She's an affirmative action hire for, for Lord of the Rings. Like, were you in the original stories? Do you look like you, you fit in there? No? Then, the Woody, I mean... What do you think you are? You think you weren't, you weren't, no, you were not the best person for the job. The best person for the job would have been an English person or at least a European person. Everything in Hollywood is about removing a European from the protagonist role and putting a non-European in that role, uh, making sure that every antagonist is blonde haired, blue eyed, or sometimes red haired, because that's the peak of the European hierarchy. Even if they have to take actors who are like Latin Americans, dark hair, dark eyes, they'll literally dye their hair blonde to make sure that you know that they're the bad guys. The cliche blonde haired, blue eyed, Swedish skier type, uh, these people hate beauty. They hate anything that's pure and light. It scares and disgusts them. Fundamentally, these globalists are filthy, ugly, worm creatures. They want to make the world as ugly as they are, or to be more charitable, as ugly as they feel they are. But, I mean, they really are ugly inside and out, usually. It's like it it comes out comes out on the surface, because like, their whole, whole life is just hatred and misery for people who look like you. They really abhor beauty. I, I mean, it's like you can see it expressed in the artwork that they 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 um they put on a pedestal. It's just I mean, the artwork that came before, like the modern art. There's a whole there's a whole bit different theory on that. It, like you see the stuff that they they claim is to be emulated, and it's just it's just like Lucifer. It's just filth, and a lot of it, it's filth, disgusting. And a lot of it's just cringy. It's like oh hey, we're gonna put a a urinal on the wall. It's like that's just dumb. That's like that's a child brain. That's a baby. No no no, it's stunning and brave. We're do, we're we're doing something really. No you're not. You're just doing like something a child would think is. I mean these these are just the, like. It's done in Kruger effect, but like for the people who are slightly to the right of the bell curve, but they're not as far right as they think they are. To, hey, look, I I put a cross in a jar, jar of uh, yellow fluid. Oh, okay. I mean, would you like to put any other religious? How dare you? How, I'm just saying, you could put some other religious symbols in there. There's two other religious symbols I could think of. Would that be stunning and brave? It's not stunning and brave if you can put the one symbol in, in, a, in a jar of yellow food dye and nobody will do anything about it. Because you live in you live in a free nation protected by 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 laws that these European men created. They created everything that's allowing you to destroy it. It's like, why not, yeah, you could go to some other countries and uh, put those other two symbols or three symbols really um, in a jar of yellow food food 
color. What do you think would happen to you in those other co countries if you put uh, those other symbols in there? What do you think would happen to you, France? Yeah, you want to be stunning and brave. Why don't you, uh, why don't you speak up for women's rights in those other countries? It's like, oh, we're not that stunning and brave. Yeah, I thought, because you're just a bunch of hypocritical pussies. They're just the worst people on earth. It's just harder and harder just to not, uh, not, not spur. I said, like, why don't you do live streams? Oh, that's a good question, because uh, they have to be immediately deleted afterwards uh i have a i have a hard time i have a hard time maintaining that political correctness <laughs> such a challenge um so these people uh these warm people they hate they hate anything anything beauty um i think it's because that they're de demons in mock human flesh suits but that's just my own crazy conspiracy theory which really doesn't sound that crazy uh in current year first they came for alex jones they want to make questioning the narrative that the media tells you illegal. If you look into that latest Jones case and read between the lines a little bit, I mean, extrapolate from what they want this holding to be. That's the real, what they were really trying to do. They're trying to make questioning the narrative punishable. What? I'm going to stop right there. Let me uh, let me just skip all this. Um, anyway, so back to Rings of Power. Um, none of this exists in a vacuum. And don't say anything in the comments, you assholes. <laughs> none of this exists in a vacuum. I reference the... Uh, the, the film version of the Gunslinger, Stephen King's uh, seventh series. Clint Eastwood was kind of the model character. I think even in the book, they, in the first book, they mentioned Clint Eastwood. And obvious, I mean, it's just obvious that was the model character for wh where he got the first in the series from the Old West setting um, to get that Old West vibe. The spaghetti westerns, uh, which were often filmed in Italy. I guess it was cheaper over there. But the, uh, the western film set the stage you can't replace a European character with a non-European one because it wasn't his story. It's not his mythos. It's not his culture. That's literally cultural appropriation. Oh, well, no. See, it's it's, it's not in the, in, this, in this sense because, because see, um, here, my, my Bolshevik press professor told me it, it's, it's totally cool. Oh, I mean, it's not real in the first place. It's like all these, these terms you create, you're like all the foundation is built on sand. Everything is, is like, it's, um, they everything is self-referential like they create these uh they create these arguments but they start with the conclusion and, and like they do it all the time with everything like disney employee handbooks all this kind of stuff they're pushing um and you look and you go like wait wait you haven't proved your conclusion you started with a pr conclusion and you concluded the conclusion but you haven't proved where it where it's true oh well you must be estophobic if you want to see facts and evidence yeah, I guess. I mean, if that's that's a sign of the istophobic people, then then sign me up for my uh, sign me up for my Hugo Boss. I guess. Um, the thing is, you can't replace characters because it looks it looks silly. And that and like the most important thing you have to do is mock these people. That's why, uh, like, there's pop culture channels, um, Gary Nerdrotic, and there's a couple others, uh, Yellow Flash, who mock these people relentlessly. And you think like, oh, they're just they're just dumb pop culture channels. No, they're really not. Uh, they're really not dumb pop culture channels. It is very important to lampoon and mock, belittle, and humiliate these people to call them out. So what those, those are the two biggest channels I'm familiar with. They constantly call out this silliness. That's actually very important. The culture war is fought on various fronts. There are many facets to this crystal. And guys, you know, Gary Nerdrotic, he is actually doing really important stuff by laughing at how ridiculous this is, how they're gaslighting you, and he does these huge live streams, he's able to change the narrative with a few thousand people at a time that it's okay to not accept this Bolshevik uh, brainwashing. And I don't think he's using those terms, but he's introducing these concepts to people who, who are tired of this gaslighting, this, this, all this anti-white propaganda. It's like he, he would never use a term like that, fair enough. Um, but it's, it's like he introduces the concept, and then other channels introduce concepts that extrapolate from what you're seeing and introduce, you know, cultural Marxism, Bolshevism, you know, all this kind of critical theory type of stuff. And then you start making the connections. So, so those kind of like pop culture YouTube channels are really, really important. Now, the thing is the puppet masters at various levels of puppet mastery, they know how important um, those kind of channels are. And then here's the thing with uh, the Gary guy. I, like, I don't watch his videos because I'm, I'm, I don't watch a whole lot of YouTube, but I mean, I'm familiar with them. He had on Alex Jones for an interview. That takes a tremendous amount of balls because essentially you're having somebody who was blacklisted from YouTube on a live stream. And like there's a, his channel is making a ton of money. That's a very risky thing to do. When you look at him, you have to respect that level of uh that level of balls like he's 
there's so much more going on in the scenes. You see someone like that, he's, he looks like a 50-year-old burned-out hippie. But, you know, the funny thing about a lot of these, like, you know, 50-year-old burned-out hippie guys is um, a lot of them, they might still look like hippies, but you talk to them, they're incredibly based. Because by the time they hit 50, 60 and, and on up, it's like they see the way of the world and realize, like, yeah, a lot of this stuff, like, they were manipulated. You'd have to be, to be a hippie now, you'd have to be in your 70s. But, um, like, they see how things were manipulated um, back in the day through, the, you know, the same Marxists who were pulling the strings. Now, it's like, they had this ideal of, of hippiness, hippiness, but it was like, there was actually kind of a more nationalist, libertarian branch of of hippies, believe it or not. And there still are like a more libertarian branch of what the left wing would call the far extreme, oh, dangerous right. I mean, people just want to like live together and farm and have law and order and clean, safe neighborhoods. Yeah, yeah, those are the extreme dangerous. Yeah, they just want to have big families, you know, big tribes and they all want to, they all want to be together and be one tribe of people who all, all have the same values. Yeah, that's extremely dangerous. Oh, really? Because that's like human evolution for the past 20 million years, primate evolution. You know, what that seems like um, uh, seems like uh, what a conservative asks why a fence is in place before uh, before you you look to tear it down. Anyway, so these hundreds of westerns, you get guys who look like Clint Eastwood, and you, you know, yeah, the Italian actors who were able to play um, uh, they could play. They just put a little dark makeup, like. Uh, brown face was was totally cool back in those days or the italians like you take an italian in it with a tan and he can play a mexican or indian you take an italian without a tan and he can play anyone else um so they're very versatile uh, very versatile little people that way plus you have the, the advantage of uh, the cooking over there but the protagonists were guys who looked like john wayne or clint eastwood so that's the truth and the purity of the story it doesn't make sense to swap in somebody else they only do it because of cultural marxism we're at war with these people. Some of us know it, and many people are many people are starting to learn it. A lot of people are just thinking of looking at these these movies and go like, "Yeah, these movies are weird, and they're getting weirder, which is great because once it starts waking you up, you start looking back at older movies. It goes, "Oh yeah, movies of the past are so much better." And you look back at those movies and you go like, "Oh, they were doing it back then too." Even like I said, I watched some Catwoman uh, last night. It was two thousand and four, and you look at who the protagonists were and the antagonists were, and you go, "Oh, that was, they were doing it in two thousand and four." This at a cultural jamming or cultural um, propaganda introducing these concepts of who's who's the bad antagonist? Oh, it's this blonde hair character. In fact, she's so blonde, the hair is almost white and she wears a white suit. It's like white on white. Oh, oh yeah, they were doing that in 2004. You can go back to the 80s and look at movies like the Karate Kid type of movies, which was, you know, if you're of a certain age, it was influential. You go, oh, who are the bad guys? Oh, this blonde haired kid. Oh, God, blondes are so scary, aren't they? And you go back further and further. It's like, yeah, it all kind of started at one time period. Kind of weird how they... Uh, I mean, once you notice it, you can't unnotice it. And then you, and you look at, like, oh, Hollywood, like, this, it's an issue. And it's, you can't... Once you put on the They Live glasses, they're permanent. They don't come off. It's, it's, you see this stuff everywhere. And it's not confirmation bias because it's objectively true. Um, anyway, the thing is, people are only seeing the tip of the iceberg. There's, there's obviously so much more going on. So I mentioned the Gunslinger movie because it was obvious and so awkward because you saw, if you saw the movie, you can go find it online. You saw this old west town with distinctly different groups from around the world, you know, from a Hollywood casting call. You had Africans, Chinese, Mexicans who were all at the exact first generation of mixing. You had an African man and a Chinese woman, woman who were just got together that first generation of tribal mixing because the next stage you would have washed away all the visible diversity because the next stage would have been one homogenous group of people i mean that's the like they, they say they value diversity like the only way to keep diversity is to not bring disparate groups together because you destroy the unique diversity and so it's kind of a self it's like you don't really value diversity you just want to homogenize everybody so anyway, in that movie, it's like it looks so weird because you saw all these distinct groups of people. And so you're saying like, oh, so the movie just happened to catch this village at the first exact generation. It's like, yeah, for the sake of the movie's propaganda to promote this tribal mixing, it's like otherwise they would all look like one group of people. It's like, oh, so this movie's nothing more than propaganda. And it sucks. It's like, yeah, that's why the gun, well, it's one of the reasons why the gunslinger was horrible. Besides, obviously, they uh, they swapped out the Clint Eastwood character for uh, I don't know who the character was, uh, Isra Alba or something like that. Anyway, so um, I mean, it's just it's just it's just it's so f so friggin'. I mean, once you see this stuff, it's like you can hear you can hear. I'm trying to like maintain the navigational guidelines, but like 
it's it's hard not to just uh, lose your rag over this kind of stuff because it's once you see it, it's so freaking obvious, and you want everyone else to see it without sounding like a total tinfoil hat nut job. Anyway, so the um, thing is, I know a lot of other people are waking up to this because I I see them even on the normie social media sphere. So like, yeah, I noticed that. I noticed what's going on with this, and then they, you know. Once they know that you're cool, it's like they can get a little bit honest. So it is, uh, the awakening is happening. Anyway, so Wheel of Time and um, and uh, Rings of Power, they're doing the same thing. you got all these groups from around the world. And, and like, a, you know, an Irishman is, is not a, ooh, I almost said a, a Chinese person <laughs> or a Japanese person or a Nigerian or Somalian or whatever, you know, Messiah, Messiah, whatever. They're all from different parts of environments that, grow them into they have to adapt and overcome those environments if you're a cold cloudy overcast area you're going to have a certain uh, morphology that matches that area it's just darwin darwinism 101 so it doesn't make sense when you've got like a, an ethiopian and uh, and a, a swedish they're, they're together it's like the melanin in their skin the adaptations are all completely suited for a different environment. And the left wing hears that and they just, they crap themselves. Like, oh, you're saying one is, one is, they're different, they're different. You can't say that. It's like, yeah, they're in entirely different environments. Thousands of years of adaptation to different climates. Why would you, why would they, they don't, why would they come together? They're it's suited for entirely different purposes. Because the left wing thinks people are fungible. You can just swap out one for another. And it's like, well, the box office sales aren't really reflecting that because it, it just looks ridiculous. The thing is, you got all these groups from around the world living together and working together in, in peace and harmony, which uh, it looks weird to us because, you know, if you turn on the news, you see how you see how uh, you see the reality of the situation. Different people actually don't want to be around people who are not of their tribe. And it's not as nefarious as it sounds. It's like I said, they come from different environments. They have different values. You don't want to be around someone with a different value from you because it results in endless conflict. Life isn't about, no, it's about challenges and accepting our differences and our diversity. No, we don't want to do that. We just want to be around people who are uh, share our values. Oh, but, but we want you to be forced together. So all these groups that are being forced together, let's look at that group who is pulling strings on this. Who's this group who wants us to all force together to cause conflict? Who are those people? Don't say it in the comments. I know. Just just let, let it go. Let it go. You can go on Telegram for that kind of stuff. The thing is, on screen, it all looks weird because different people hate each other. You know, humans are, are natural nationalists. It's like millions of years to be tribal. We came down from the trees 10 million years ago. And it's a, obviously a small group of very powerful globalists who are, who are pushing this kind of stuff. Though, uh, you know, m most people actually want to go in the other direction. They're so fed up with endless conflict. And they're looking like, oh, it'd just be better off. Like, we just... We don't have to all, we don't have to be forced together. Oh, that, that's an option? Yeah, that's, that's totally an option. <laughs> Too much for YouTube? I never know. I never know. Um, anyway, so people tend to, you know, to be, be want to not to, people don't want to have endless conflict every day. Like they just want that clean, safe, quiet neighborhood with people who have the same values. <laughs> Why would they want anything different? It's uh, these globalists who are, who are pushing all this kind of cultural Marxism go like, yeah, but you live in a lily white neighborhood or uh, at the most be like a, a high income, uh, Asian, uh, European neighborhood with you know, like sometimes gated community. It's like, yeah, you guys are complete hypocrites. You don't live among the stuff you espouse. It's kind of weird. Anyway, so the stuff we see on screen is so ridiculous. Lord of the Rings is a complete universe. It came from the mind of an Englishman. Only one Englishman on Earth created this story. It's complete and perfect in that regard. The best you can do is act as a steward to be curative and respect it. Globalists are um, are vermin. They corrupt through transformation. European stories are only useful to them so that they can erase Europeans from the European stories that the Europeans created. <laughs> really sounds disturbing when you think about it. Um, these uh, these these bad people uh, can't create. They can only take something from these authors and these storytellers, and they can subvert it for propaganda purposes. Anyway. This is supposed to be a short minute video. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys on Odyssey, BitChute, and Subscribe Star. If you can uh, follow me over there. Uh, until next time.